Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks some more. So we see this mentioned here and there in the news that the government are planning on getting rid, getting shot of landlines. Oh, wow. Now there's a surprise, eh? You see, they want to herd all of the sheep onto the mobile phones. That's what this is all about. It says here, traditional landlines face acts by 2025 as they are replaced with digital calls. All households and businesses will need the internet or mobile phone to make calls in a major digital shakeup. Though groups have warned the elderly and vulnerable could struggle. Yeah, they don't, they don't give a stuff about the old and the vulnerable, that's for sure. Traditional landlines are set to be axed from 2025 as the UK telecoms industry makes the switch to digital calls. In just over three years from now, all households and businesses will need the internet or a mobile phone to make calls in what has been described as a major digital shakeup. People without the internet may need an engineer to visit their home to get them set up and those with older phones could need to buy a new handset. As millions of Brits are pushed online, you see they use that word, you are being pushed, you are being forced into this corner. It says, as millions of Brits are pushed online to make a call for the first time, groups have raised fears the elderly and vulnerable will struggle with the change. This change is being led by the government, it says here. Yeah, it's being led it's being led by the puppet masters, who I don't know, who are they? The United Nations, the World Economic Forum, or whoever is behind them. That's who's leading it. And you can be sure this will be all around the world. Apparently it says here in the UK, 1.5 million homes do not have access to the internet. About half a million households do not own a mobile. It says landlines have fallen by 4 million since the year 2000. And it says elsewhere, there are 22 million landlines in the UK. Somewhere else it says that there are 70%, that 70% of UK homes have a landline. So this is one hell of a switchover. And again, this is being forced onto people in order to get everyone stuck with those damn smartphones. That is what this is all about. It's not from a safety point of view once you switch over. I mean, what if your internet goes down? What if the power is cut? Now, I've said before, and I'll say it again, that mobile phone, that smartphone that you have been using incessantly for the last God knows how long, that is the biggest enemy, the biggest shill, the biggest infiltrator that is consigning your life to a future misery of enslavement. That thing you hold in your hand, that you take with you everywhere, that is your number one enemy. Why do you think they spent the last 10 years creating apps to get you addicted to it, to make it so useful for everyday life, to make it basically indispensable so that you need it for work in some cases? That's why, because that is the ball and chain that is going to really seal the fate of humanity. That's why I keep saying we need to ditch the smartphones. And that in a perfect world, if everyone destroyed their smartphones today simultaneously, then that would put their plans back decades. You can still get one of those old flip top type Nokia phones. Just get rid of the smartphones. I know that is not realistic, but look at Australia. You have to, every shop you go into now, they want you to use a QR code. You, everybody's using their smartphones to do this. If nobody had the smartphones, they wouldn't be able to do it. They wouldn't even have thought of the idea if everybody didn't have a smartphone. Now, I know this is unrealistic, okay, to expect this to happen, but it's not impossible either. Nothing is impossible. Every time I say this, people say, but Hugo, I watch your videos on the phone. How will I keep up to date with everything if I don't have my phone? Well, we'll get a laptop. Use a PC, a personal computer. I've got a laptop. I do all of this from a laptop. You don't have to have a smartphone. Or someone will say, just don't download the app on the phone. Simple. 
But the operating systems now, as you can see from some of the news stories out in the last couple of weeks, Android and Apple are already building JAB passports into the operating system. You won't be able to get away from it. And you can clearly see the plan here with the landline ban by 2025. I mean, logically now, nobody can deny what is going on here. It's clear, it's so transparent, okay? It doesn't matter whether you've had the jab or not. You now have jab passports, which they want to make so that you can't travel overseas without them. And they will probably try and make it for pubs and clubs and who knows what else. And this will all be made possible by you having a smartphone through your smartphone. Already, they are weaponizing the smartphone against you and against society. They have already announced a centralized digital currency incoming. Again, taking away your freedoms, a cashless society, and, and the currency will be programmable. They will be able to allocate what your money can be spent on and how long you can have it before it deletes itself. Total control of your money. And how will that work? It will work through your smartphone again, weaponized against you. We have this surveillance state. I mean, it's already here to a certain extent, but it will ramp up 2000% in the future, monitoring you and measuring how much energy you use and recording every financial transaction you make. The ability to instantly give you financial penalties, all made possible through your willingness to continue to carry the smartphone, this weaponized state spy and enemy in your home, in your pocket even, because you've continued to carry it around. And don't forget the social credit system incoming. There's that as well. All of it made possible because of this feckin' phone. And over the last two decades, they have been herding, herding the public slowly, getting them addicted to their phones, turning their phones into ego magnets with their selfies and their Facebook profiles and their silly apps, whilst at the same time disconnecting people from meeting face to face more, disconnecting people from reality, disconnecting communities, swapping real communities with real people, meeting them face to face and swapping it for a virtual reality community. And those people out there who leave comments about the end times and the mark of the beast, well, who am I to argue with that? It's clear that they want to make the phones indispensable so that you can't live, you can't access services, you can't do anything without them. And then, of course, the danger will be, if, if we're stupid enough to get into this position, the danger would be, oh, what if I lose my phone? I mean, it's obvious that eventually they will find a way of putting that device into you. I just wish people would get rid of their smartphones. Now, I'm not trying to big myself up here, but I believe in five to six years time, if we are all still around and things continue to go the way they are, I think, you know, someone's going to look back at this video or the other one where I said everyone should destroy their smartphones. And I think they'll say, if only, if only everyone had done this, we would not be in the hell we are now. If we could only turn back time and all destroy these smartphones. You know, again, I know that the notion that everyone destroying their phones, smartphones is unrealistic. But hey, I've got to put it out there. It has to start somewhere. As always, thanks for listening. Come and subscribe to the tribe at hugotalks.com, a place for like-minded souls who don't follow the fake stream media.